Celebrities showing up to NBA games has definitely become a big deal in recent years. Yeah, some show up just to you know, support their hometown teams, but others have gotten into heated trash talking debates with players on the sideline. Now with Kevin Hart becoming a worldwide known talent for his comedy and movies, he's also hilarious anytime he shows up to an NBA game. Kevin's not the typical fan. He uses his time while he's at games to try to help his team win. He's always been one of those guys to just talk smack to players while sitting courtside. When Kevin and Allen Iverson were at game two of the playoffs in 2018 between the Sixers and the Heat, they of course were rapping for Philly to win. So much that Kevin's trash talking went a little overboard and it fueled Dwayne Wade to shut him up. Wade went off for 28 points on 11 of 16 shooting, which was the difference in a 113 to 103 victory that gave the Heat home court advantage as the series moved to Miami for game three. After that, Wade was being interviewed on the court and he was asked what got into him tonight. And he said, Kevin Hart, thank Kevin Hart for that. It's a great feeling when you go into that bag, especially on the road. You know, you got people like Kevin Hart talking on the sideline and when you got the crowd going through and just saying things they're saying, I heard a lot of things tonight. I used it all as motivation and to be able to hush a whole crowd, it's a great feeling. That's a feeling I hope my son feels one. Day. Now, the next night, right before game three, Dwayne talked once again about Kevin and said, We're not friends right now. We made it very clear we're not friends right now. We'll be friends after the playoffs are over with. We're not friends. I don't like it. Now, this wasn't the first significant moment Kevin Hart's had in the NBA. A few years back, he got to participate in the 2016 All Star Weekend with a contest of his own. Leading into the weekend, Kevin Hart did what he's good at by trash talking on Twitter, but this time to the Golden State Warriors. Kevin tweeted, This year I want to step it up a notch and take down one of the NBA's best shooters in the three point contest. That's right, you heard me. This next tweet said, No, I'm not talking about Steph Curry. I no, I can't beat him, but I can beat his teammate at Money 23 Green. Yeah, I can whoop him. Then his final tweet said, say no more, chump. I'll see you at All-Star Weekend. I'm about to embarrass you in front of millions. And this turned out to be a three-point contest with Draymond Green, where the comedian faced off with Draymond in a special contest, giving the Warrior star a run for his money. Now, Hart actually almost beat Green with a late rally, but they actually ended up tying with 12 threes each. Hart drilled his final attempt as the buzzer sounded. But they presented Draymond with a special trophy anyways, and Kevin took some heat from Green, who jokingly compared the height of the trophy to the height of Kevin. But Kevin continued his trash talking ability because you know why not he's hilarious and in 2017 during a game between the warriors and the 76ers kevin hart and draymond green were once again seen trash talking each other throughout the game and afterwards draymond spoke about it saying it's definitely a great energy in this building it's usually like that every time we come here but you throw kevin hart in there talking smack the whole game it definitely makes it fun it's one of those games where it gives you a little added motivation when you got a guy sitting there talking i think it's fun for us it's fun for them it's good to see them draw crowds like that after the few years they've had putting this franchise back together it's amazing to see in 2017 during a game james James Harden and the Rockets traveled to Philly, and Kevin Hart was on the sidelines giving James Harden all sorts of trouble for missing his shots in the first quarter. Hart was appearing on Jimmy Kimmel a couple days after the game, and he was asked about trash talking with James Harden, and he said, I talk a lot of trash. I go there and I sit courtside to mess with the players. That's literally all I go for. It gets so bad because they can tell when I've had a few too many drinks because I'm slurring. I'm in Philadelphia, we're filming Untouchable, I had the day off, so I decided to go to a Sixers game. James Harden's playing in the game, and the whole first quarter he's just off. I was like, you know why you off? Cause you're in my city. Your beard stinks. I hate you. I hate your calves. <laughs> I think you got butt shots. I was saying a bunch of stuff to him and he got mad. He said, remember all this. I'm about to cook you. You gonna cook me? Well, put me in the pot cause I'm ready to be cooked. I don't even know why he's paying me this much attention. At some point I was like, James, this is very unprofessional on your behalf. You're not even supposed to be talking to me this much. James went on to score 51 points and here's the bad part. They beat us by 30. And with the minute left, he was dribbling the ball, standing in the half court and he was just staring at me. He goes, Tell your team what you did to him. I said, you keep your mouth shut. That's our business. Now, Harden talked about that same game and what happened when he said, it wasn't at Houston. It was at Philly. Kevin Hart was talking smack, telling me I wasn't going to score and I wasn't going to do this and I wasn't going to win. And I think I ran off like 10 straight points and we won the game. None of the celebrity that's made her presence known surrounding the NBA is Rihanna. More specifically, she showed love to LeBron James during his years with Miami and Cleveland, posting about him as well as showing up to certain games. But during the 2017 NBA Finals and Game 1 between the Warriors and the Cavaliers, Rihanna came in hoping for a LeBron James win and seemed to be rooting for Cleveland. She was apparently making a huge scene on the sideline, yelling many things at Warriors players, and was even caught on camera dabbing to the crowd. During the game, she was also heard yelling, Brick, at Kevin Durant, who was shooting free throws, and from that point forward, she would yell stuff at him whenever he shot. And KD had some fun with that situation, staring her down whenever he made a shot in front of her. But with Rihanna being as big of a celebrity as she is, the players themselves were asked if she played a factor in the game. During a post-game interview, Curry was asked about all the nonsense that was going down with Rihanna and if she was a distraction. And Curry said, at times, yeah, there's a lot of noteworthy people to show up, especially this time of year to the finals games. I saw actor Kevin Hart on the sidelines. He's over there cracking jokes the whole game, stuff like that. You can have fun with it at times. You don't want to obviously let it distract you. As players, we do a pretty good job being able to turn out noise and distractions and stuff on the fly when we need to be able to do what we do on the floor, but still enjoy the atmosphere of the stage that we're on. LeBron also talked about all the noise from Rihanna that game, even though it wasn't directed towards him, but he said, I was really just focused on the floor, so anything outside of that, I don't pay any mind to it. I really don't hear the noise. I couldn't care less. 
It really doesn't matter to me. I'm just here to play ball, compete for a championship. The narrative and the people writing articles and things like that, I don't care. Those things don't bother me. So it's hard for me to even tell my teammates, hey, don't listen to it because I don't even get involved in it. I stopped caring a long time ago, so it doesn't even bother me at all. But Clay Thompson was another player who spoke about the craziness in game one, and afterwards he told reporters, it means nothing if you come out here and lay an egg. It's either gonna make you feel too good or it's gonna make you feel bad about yourself. You wanna stay even killed and not get too caught up in what people are saying because then you get stuff that's unnecessary into your head. But Kevin Durant also had to speak on this situation, seeing as Rihanna was really trying to get into his head over pretty much everybody else. Katie said, Rihanna never came to my game before, unless we were in LA. She didn't come to a home game of mine before. Jay-Z and all these people who come, that amount of attention from me is, is like, you ever seen Hancock? You remember when he had to walk into that event, all these cameras were flashing and he just didn't know how to smile? That's me sometimes. I get a little overwhelmed at that. Cause man, I can remember me cooking up as a kid by myself. Now millions of people are watching me play. That's an adjustment, bro. But all that noise from Rihanna ended up not paying a huge factor in the game as the Warriors cruised past the Cavs 113 to 91 and eventually won the series in five games. Now Floyd Mayweather is yet another celebrity who's no stranger to showing up to NBA games. He's constantly been seen taking pictures with NBA stars and the players themselves love putting on a show for Money Mayweather. When Donovan Mitchell was just a rookie in 2017, he had a huge welcome to the NBA moment when he was playing against the Clippers in the Staples Center and none other than Floyd Mayweather was there. Floyd was apparently telling Patrick Beverly not to let Donovan Mitchell score on him and in a recent interview with ESPN, Donovan Mitchell talked about it from his point of view and he said, my first month of the season, I hadn't made an NBA three-point shot. I was still trying to figure my way out. I wasn't playing too great. We were playing the Clippers. We were down by 16 or 17. And I went on like a 10 or 12 point run by myself against Pat Bev. I was like, oh, this is exciting. Floyd Mayweather's in the front row. I'm talking trash. And I'm looking at Floyd like, hey, this is what I do. I'm trying to be that little kid to be funny. I guess Pat had to deal with Floyd or they knew each other. And I guess Floyd motioned over to him like, don't let him do that to you. I didn't score the rest of the game. Floyd kind of looked at me and shrugged his shoulders like, well, I think that was a pretty funny experience. I was on top of the world for those 12 points and I was quickly grounded in a matter of seconds. Austin Rivers is also at a run in with Floyd Mayweather in a game at the Staples Center, but they weren't talking smack to each other. In fact, Austin talked about Mayweather making the competition fun when Rivers said, I never had a problem with Floyd, so it was always fun. What he does is try to gas up two dudes. It could be whoever. It could be two star players. It could be two bench players. He'd be like, yo, he can't guard you. And that guy will hear purposely and they'll start going at it. He's done that with me on a couple of players. He did that with me and Dennis Schroeder, getting us to go at each other. And surely enough, we did. Kevin Hart will say stuff. It's the usual suspects. Floyd's definitely one of the more vocal courtside celebrities. I mean, that's what he is. He's a boxer. Those guys talk. So, so you have Floyd and Kev. Hope comes to the games, but he doesn't say anything. Maybe to LeBron, I'm not in that breath, so I don't know who he talks to. Now with Kobe Bryant being considered one of the best basketball players ever, on top of playing in a city full of celebrities, he's had his fair share of having to perform in front of big names. Kobe recently shared his experience with a celebrity in game one of the 2010 NBA Finals, when he said his killer instinct took over and he blocked out the noise of a very famous comedian. Kobe said, the one that sticks out is the lack of interaction that I had during a playoff series with Chris Rock. I got home and we had the TV on, they're showing the highlights of the game, and they show Chris Rock sitting next to the bench at Staples Center, like talking in my ear about just random stuff, I guess. I don't know. It's just me and Chris Rock, but I'm looking dead ahead. I don't even hear him. It's not even an acknowledgement. He's in my right ear. That's the one that sticks to me the most. I don't even know what happened. It was pretty funny for me to look back at. Chris Rock was also at the legendary game where Kobe scored 81 points. And during one of his shows, Chris recently spoke about what he was saying about Kobe. And he said, I was at the 81 game. That was the most amazing game. He scored 81. He needed about 69. The Lakers were that bad at the time. Now that was unbelievable. You know what's funny? If they ever do a replay of this, they came to me on the sideline. Do you think Kobe's the best player the game? I was like, no, Dwayne Wade. I was hating on him so bad, almost like he heard it. I've been rooting against Kobe my whole life, but now I gotta give it up to him. He's been there. Now, probably one of the biggest names in recent years causing commotion in the NBA is Drake. During the last few years, Drake's constantly repping his home country team of Toronto whenever he's had a break from the studio performing on sold out tours. During the 2019 NBA Finals, Drake went to every home game the Raptors had against the Warriors and throughout the series was involved in talking plenty of trash to Warriors players. He even went as far as showing up to game one wearing Steph Curry's dad's jersey that he had signed by Dell himself who happened to play with the Raptors during his own career. But throughout that series, Drake appeared to call Draymond and Durant trash multiple times in each game, and many even said that Drake could have been the reason the Warriors lost despite battling injury. After the series, almost the entire starting five for the Warriors spoke about Drake's appearances on the court, where he was even walking on the court during timeouts and jumping and celebrating with players during the game. After the Warriors snuck away at the W in Toronto, 127 to 125, Durant spoke and said, don't give Drake that much credit. He's not the reason why it was fun out there tonight, but he does bring a different element to the game. Someone who's so close to the organization and close to the city, everybody realizes it when you play here in Toronto. So it was a fun game. The crowd is always amazing here. I'm glad there's a solid turnout and I'm glad we got the W. Curry added to Durant's comment by saying, I don't pay him no mind during the game. Durant actually got heat for missing a shot during the game where Drake then called him trash. But Katie talked about this saying, I hated missing that one because I had to ignore him because I'd heard him talking some trash on the sideline, but I made up for it the next 
next play. When Durant was asked to comment on Drake's number 35 tattoo, Durant said, I told him, man, I'm not talking about no other man's tattoo. And Draymond was yet another person who had an interaction with Drake during the series, and he spoke about Drake saying, I think so many people make a big deal out of it. It is what it is. He's a fan. He talks and gets more attention because he's Drake. So many people are complaining about it like, you don't let any other fan do that. But like, yeah, any other fan is just not Drake. So they probably shouldn't be able to do that. But I don't mind. Ayo, dog. Click on this video, bro. What are you doing? Let's be honest, man. You got nothing better to do. You might as well watch this next video. It's literally right there. You don't even have to think about it. You just literally just click it. It's that easy. Seriously that easy. You just click it.